All right, here we go. Hey, everyone. Good afternoon. Happy Monday, and welcome to a very special edition of our Google Plus Hangout series here at MLSsoccer.com. We have a little MLS all-star flavor here as we are on location in Kansas City, gearing up for the main event, of course, Wednesday night, the 2013 AT&T MLS all-star game against Roma, 9 p.m. Eastern. You can watch that one, ESPN2. Uni Moss for TSN and RDS up in Canada. We cannot wait. And, of course, we are very excited to be joined here right in Social HQ at MLS All-Star by the man, of course, himself, who will be leading the MLS All-Stars on Wednesday night, Sporting Kansas City manager Peter Vermees. Peter, thanks so much for joining us. How are we doing? It's my pleasure. I'm doing great. All right. Sounds good. So you're taking some time out of your super busy schedule this week, of course, which we really appreciate, and we understand you are coming from the team's introductory press conference. How was that? Yeah, it was good. Um, you know, I mean, a ton of media. Um, it's an excellent showing for Kansas City. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's just a, it's a tremendous event right now. I think it's a great reward to Kansas City at the moment, and, you know, I'm looking forward to a great game on Wednesday night. Yeah, for sure. And, of course, for those who might not have been aware, obviously we are in town in Kansas City right now. You didn't have to travel in from anywhere, of course, except for Montreal over the weekend. But the players have been filtering in last night, and we'll have some players who are on that Gold Cup roster coming in a little bit later. Actually, they might even be arriving right now. So you had a limited roster for training this morning, and, of course, that didn't really go as expected, did it? What were you guys? Uh, what did you guys do? You didn't quite make it outside. Well, I mean, look, I guess it's a good reason, right? The, uh, <laughs> US, the, the U.S. national team won the Gold Cup yesterday. So from that perspective, it's, it's, uh, it's a great thing that those guys were able to do that. So yeah. you know, my hat and congratulations, it goes out to them. So, um, so eight of those guys couldn't make it in until this afternoon. Um, so realistically, it was just a regeneration opportunity with the other guys that came off their games this weekend. We just had a small little uh, session in the gymnasium. Oh. Oh. And then, uh, you know, we'll get ready tomorrow. Have a small little treat. We'll get ready for the show Wednesday night. So you guys just you guys just took over took over the hotel gym, I guess. All right, sounds we, good. We, well. we kicked we kicked everybody out. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, we we got after it. Let's say that. All right, sounds good. So I know. Here's how this one's going to work if you're just tuning in uh, with us right now. Of course, we got the word that Peter was going to be joining us this afternoon, so we threw it out to all of our fans across all of our social networks um, to submit questions uh, for you, and we pulled the best ones. I'm going to ask them, obviously, on behalf of all of you that are tuning in, and Peter's going to give his uh, best answers, and that will be that. We also have a few of our own. So, Peter, with that sorted, are you, uh, you ready to get going? Let's get it on. All right, man, let's get it on. First one, this one coming from Tyler on Facebook. He just wanted to know, I mean, just in regards to the composition of the team that you've put together, uh, it, obviously we're only here for a couple of days. Because it's such a constrained amount of time, what can you do to, I guess, create as much chemistry and cohesion in this group as possible? And as far as what you do as a manager on game day, how does the limited time affect that? Well, look, first off, it's an all-star game, right? And you're bringing all these guys in from different teams. Uh, obviously, they're all world-class players. Um, they're all in very good form at the moment. The, the biggest thing is, 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 first off, they need to enjoy the event. Uh, it's, it's a reward for them for how well they've done up to this point within our season. That's the first part. The second is, is that from, from my point of view and the rest of my coaching staff, we have to keep it simple. Um, there's not a ton that we can do with one training session. So it's really trying to make sure that we keep our game plan simple, the formation simple, and then just make sure that all the guys know that whoever's going to be playing at what time, to just go out and give everything you have. Um, don't get too frustrated if, you know, you made a run, a guy didn't give you a ball because, you know, it may not be in sync. But at the end of the day, they just need to know that they're going to give their best. And if they do that, I think it will be a good match on Wednesday night. Yes, yeah, certainly. And, of course, so in – in assembling this team, we had the fan 11 that the fans voted on a few weeks back. Uh, and then we had the commissioner's picks of Tim Cahill and DeAndre Yedlin. And then you filled in the rest uh, from what we understand. Obviously, Nick Romando, Tony Beltran, Corey Ash, Kyle Beckerman, Patrice Bernier, Robbie Keane, and Camilo uh, from Vancouver. What was your goal? I guess, what were you thinking about uh, when you kind of assembled the rest of the team? And the other players, Jack Max and Tim Cahill, the yep, of course. Injury, so. Just wanted to just remind you on that one, but no, you know, thanks for that. Thanks for the reminder. There's so, there's so many good players 
in our league at the moment that are playing very well, and then there's so many teams as well. Um, the difficulty is making everyone happy. Uh, one thing I wanted to do is I wanted to respect the fans because this game really is about the fans. So in their 11 picks, I, I wanted to keep all of them. I had the choice not to, but I wanted to keep all of them because I actually think that they picked a great 11 player, so it was really easy for me to say yes to. In the other picks that I, that I made personally, it was really about position specific because um, I really wish we had 22 players in the team. Um, and the reason being is that it's a very difficult time during the year. Everybody's in the middle of their season. Um, with all due respect to all the coaches in the, in the league, they all want their players not to play 90 minutes because they need them for the weekend. They want them to be well-rested and also the potential of, of any injury. So I had to be very respectful of all of those situations. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, there's probably going to be two players that are going to have to play 90 minutes. Um, that's just the way it goes. Um, but outside of that, I really wanted to make sure that we are in a position to cover ourselves positionally, and the other was to give us enough cover so that we could minimize the number of players playing 90 minutes. Yeah, for sure. And, and we touched on it earlier. Obviously, Robbie Keane and Tim Cahill are both out. They've been replaced by Landon Donovan and Jack McInerney. First of all, on those two guys, um, what, did you, what are your thoughts on Landon's performance for the U.S. recently at the Gold Cup, and second, on Jack Mack's season in Philadelphia for such a young player uh, doing yeah. so well? Yeah, I think Landon, his, his form is, is, man, it's incredible at the moment. Um, I'm glad that Sporting doesn't have to play L.A. anytime soon. Um, he's been flying. Uh, so, you know, I've, I've, always, I've always thought that he is uh, um, one of the best players in the United States, um, not only that we've developed, but, you know, he's just a guy that over the last few years has been in incredible form. So, so it's, it's great to see that he's been, uh, you know, added to the team. And then in Jack Mack, I'd say this, you know, look, he has had an incredible season. He's a young guy. It, it poses um, uh, uh, a great picture of what the future for him looks like and for this league to have a player that's so young and has done so well in such an uh, early stage. Um, I'm glad that we're able to get him into the, into the all-star team because as, as much as maybe he wasn't picked in the first go-around, he's definitely a tremendous replacement um, uh, for one of the guys that got injured. And, and I would say to you that, again, it's very difficult. A lot of those other guys have proven it over, you know, consistently over years, and that's probably the reason why they were chosen. But at the end, um, it's great for a kid like him who's had such success at such an early stage of his career to get rewarded with this opportunity. Yeah, sure. And a follow-up to that, uh, we had a question from Tyler Carter on Facebook. He wanted to know, is there, is there one guy, is there a group of guys on this roster that you're that you're most excited to work with, of course, besides Aurelian Colin, Matt Beasler, and Graham Zussi? That's uh, funny. Um, uh, I don't know if you were really happy for Colin or anything like that. If you were hoping. What, what's that? I didn't know if you were hoping for a break from Colin at all. Um, I was hoping that, that he wasn't going to play. No, just kidding. Um, you, you know, when you when you look at some of the guys that have been added to this team, Mike McGee is a is an interesting one for me because you know he's played at two big clubs that have some big names over the years in New York and now L.A., and now he's in Chicago, and, and no disrespect to Chicago by any means, but, you know, you have Henri, you have Beckham, you have different players at, at those clubs that just take on a life of their own. Mm -hmm. And it's hard for a guy like McGee to maybe, even though he's doing so well, he's just in the shadows of those guys. And uh, he's had a tremendous year this year, and I'm, I'm so glad that he's been rewarded with this because um, it's great to see guys like him that have come up through the system and have played so well and sort of been under the radar and now get recognized. So um, I've always been a, a huge fan of his game. Um, I have a lot of respect for the way that he finds um, the right moments to do the right thing in certain games. And whether it's dribbling, whether it's shooting, whether it's passing, what have you, it just is, is fantastic to see that he's getting recognized. Perfect. Well, Peter, Are you guys bringing in the commissioner now to kick me out? Is that what's going on? <laughs> I think they're kicking me out, maybe. But we have Commissioner Garver here, of course, uh, to uh, to ask a question of his own. I'm on some headphones right now, so I'm going to hand those over to him. Peter, I don't know what he's going to ask you, so you're just going to have to you're just going to have to deal with it. Do your best. Do your best, and uh, and uh, and give your answer right back. So here's the commissioner. Okay. There you go. Another one for you. Question. How you doing, buddy? All right. How are you? I'm doing well. How's the team coming along? Um, we're getting there. We'll, by tomorrow, we'll we'll be uh, all together and having a good training and getting ready for this uh, match against Roma. Good. Good. You gonna make us proud? I'm gonna do everything I can. 
So it's pretty cool out here, Peter. You guys have really done an amazing job with this in this market. It's absolutely fantastic. You should be proud. Well, you know, I said this all along that um, when you're when you're as fortunate as we are to have an ownership group that all five of our owners live in Kansas City, they work in Kansas City, they do charitable work in Kansas City, um, and then they they make commitments like they do and they follow through as they do. It's such a great reward for our, for them, our organization, and more importantly, the city of Kansas City and the fans, because these are the things that they talked about as they were coming into this league and they wanted to bring here. So I just think it's exciting. The, the change that is that has occurred is is you know a huge amount of credit has to go to them and everything that they decided to do. Um, they've had to follow through for it. So very excited for this organization in that regard. Uh, that was well said, Peter. You know, I was in uh, Chicago yesterday, and uh, boy, what a what a game! So what what do you what do you think? Compare what the national team's looking like now from your days. Well, you know, it's funny because at that time, How about that? a lot That's of people don't know question. this. Right, a lot of people don't know this, but. Obviously, I played half my career as a forward and the, and the, the latter half of my career as a defender. And when I, it was interesting because when I was playing as a forward for the national team, I actually didn't realize it, but I was a defender at that point because we always defended when I played. Um, we didn't attack like they do today. I wish I had a chance to do, do it like they do it today. It's exciting. Um, I'm so happy for that team. I'm glad that um, you know they were able to win. I think Jurgen's done a tremendous job in, in changing the culture within the group and and putting his mark on the team, and it's great to see so many guys that got an opportunity in this last Gold Cup because it's just making a larger pool as we move forward. So um, definitely exciting time in, in, in soccer's history right now. Good. Well, I look forward to seeing you later tonight. I'm on. A, I'm across the room answering fan questions on Twitter. <laughs> I'm having fun. Well, good <laughs> luck, and uh, I'll, I'll try to keep doing the same here on this as well. All right, man. See you. See you later on. Bye-bye. Good stuff. Thank you, Commissioner. There we go. How'd you do, big man? I couldn't hear what you were saying. Uh, I mean, I was on fire. I was on fire. <laughs> you were? Okay, good. Sounds good. Well, obviously, we just had Commissioner Garber on, a uh, man who's been responsible for some great growth in MLS, um, you know, in recent memory. We actually had a question on that, and I wanted to get your take on this Kunal Javeri on Facebook, Peter. I wanted to know, in your opinion, where do you see MLS in 10 years as a league as a whole? Wow, it's a good question. Um, what, what I'm amazed about is, is how far we've come in the last 10 years. Um, what I think is the most interesting thing to me is, is – the level of interest and the way that individual clubs have really started to take hold of their markets. Um, as, as, as I have said about here in Kansas City, I mean, we now um, have gone from a, from a club that has been irrelevant in the sports scene here in Kansas City to being one of the real players in the sports scene here now. And um, it's exciting. And I, I see that around our league. So what I would say is in 10 years, I think that Realistically, we are going to be in amongst um, probably the top three leagues in the world. I truly believe that from every aspect, though, right? It's not just a soccer on the field aspect, but business-wise, uh, marketing, merchandising, everything. I think we're going to be in that in that realm, if you will. Um, it's exciting where we're going because we have so much potential just in this country alone, let alone the rest of the world. And, uh, it's exciting times to be in the game. Yeah, absolutely. And spe speaking of something that people get excited about every day in and around Major League Soccer, um, the growth of the homegrown player in the academy system. Joe Donikowski, um wanted to get your take. Obviously, as a guy who's not only a head coach but also a technical director and someone who oversees the entire project, uh, really from start to finish, um, how far along has, has the academy system come, he wants to know, and, and how far do you think, where do you, where do you see it going? What's the next step? Uh, both here in Kansas City and nationally? I think uh, it was a great move by MLS years ago. I think it was 2007 when um, they mandated that all teams in the league um, at least start with the 16 and 18 in their academy it, It's It's, you know, there, there's no other answer to say than this, and that is the academy is, is, is and should be the lifeblood of every team in MLS. Um, we have to be developing our own players. Um, we have to put ourselves in a position where 
based on our style of play, based, based on our marketplace, that we have to be taking kids from in our, in our environments of where we are, develop them, and someday they just transition right into our first teams. That's already happening, happening around the league, uh, which is fantastic. Um, but I think that we need to all step up um, on the level of instruction, curriculum, coaching, uh, and then the transition that those players are making from their academy teams into the first team. All of that has to continue to get better. We have to strive to be better than we were yesterday and be better than we are going to be tomorrow. We just have to keep pushing the envelope on that because I truly believe that that's the heartbeat of every single um, MLS franchise for the future. Yeah, certainly, and, and of course, uh, one market where that has panned out really well this season has been up in Seattle. Uh, when you talk about a guy like DeAndre Yedlin, now Yedlin will, of course, uh, be coming in to Kansas City. If he's not here already, he was one of the commissioner's two homegrown picks, but what do you think about his season? Uh, of course, up in there, he's really kind of taking people by storm. I think a lot of people are excited to watch him on Wednesday night. I, I watched him in college last year. I was extremely impressed with him there, and I was um, I, I think that his transition has been fantastic um, in Seattle. I think they have a, a fantastic player in him. He is sort of the, uh, the, the prototypical um, uh, outside back for the future in this game. He's got, you know, I would, I would call leather lungs. The kid can run from box to box. Um, he's, he's very good on the attack. He recovers extremely well. Um, he, he's got good defensive instincts. So, yeah, I think he's... He's an exciting player for the future, and it's a player that I, I for sure think that is going to be a major player in our national team um, for the future. All right, sounds good. Now those those two comments on Yedlin uh, came to two of our Facebook fans up there in Seattle. They they both want to see him get some extended run um, on Wednesday night, and that leads us into another question from David Asensio on Facebook. He wanted to know if you could drop any hints on the starting eleven. Uh, let, let me say this, that obviously everyone will play. Um, uh, you can be for sure that Henri is going to start. Um, uh, Fernandez will start in goal for sure. I'm just going to give you a few highlights. I'm not going to give you a ton, okay. but um, obviously Henri is the captain. Uh, you know, obviously his experience and, and playing in these types of games, you know, his whole career is, is, is an easy one. Uh, and, and, and you'll see Graham Zussi start as well. And outside of that, I'll leave the rest of them to start guessing on uh, where the rest of them fall in. All right, sounds good. Well, they, that, those, those are some good nuggets there, Peter. I like that. I like that. So Thierry Henry is going to wear the armband. Graham Zussi will get a start along with uh, Fernandez as well. All right, that's a good one. When you look at Roma, you guys, of course, had the introductory press conference. Um, looking at it from their side, I mean, how do you, how do you see them approaching this one? Well, obviously, it's late. You know, they're getting closer and closer to the beginning of their season. So um, they obviously got to ramp up um, the intensity of 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 their their uh, their games that they play. Mm -hmm. They also need to make sure that they're um, continuously increasing the minutes for all of their players. And then, you know, from a player's point of view, all of them are still fighting for for starting positions. So um, they also have to 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 be to be working very hard in the game and making sure that they are giving the best form that they can because obviously they want to be in their team. So I think it's going to be a very tough match um, for us in, in the fact that they played quite a few games now um, and us having limited time getting together. But what I'm always confident about uh, players that play in MLS is that they always find a way to come together and, and give a good performance in games like this. So. I'm excited about it. I think that uh, you'll see a good match on, on Wednesday night and, uh, and more importantly, a very entertaining one. All right, sounds good. And, of course, Roma are going to be the first Serie A opponent uh, to, to, that we're, that we're going to see, of course, in an MLS All-Star game. Uh, Chris on Twitter wanted to know, uh, obviously there, there are some contrasting styles, but he wanted to know if, if you could compare MLS to, to really any European league, any world league out there. Is there one that kind of springs to mind for you? Uh, or is that, is that tough? I'm sorry? Is that tough? Yeah, I, I think it is in some respects. I think there's two reasons why. Is that The first is um, the time of the year in which we play. When we play throughout the summer. You don't have that you know, anywhere else the way that, that our season goes in that regard. Um, and then the other is, is that um, the amount of travel that we have to do um, based on our league. Those two things are, are, are very difficult. But, but what I would say is, there, there is a lot of similarities to a lot of teams in the Premier League. 
Uh, our game can be very physical and very fast-paced at times. Um, so, so I think you see some similarities in that regard. Um, although that I would say that across the board, the quality of players um, in the EPL is, is still at a higher level at the moment. Yeah, sure. All right. Well, last one coming in from Jared on Google Plus to round things off. And of course, thanks so much to our friends uh, at Google Plus for allowing us to uh, to really make this happen with you today, Peter. It's it's, it's been a, it's been a great time. Uh, obviously, you taking the time out to answer these questions. But um, how did you, Jared? Wants to know how kind of how did you shape your own managerial style? Was there one manager out there that you kind of studied, uh, you know, as you as as a young player might study uh, an, an older player in that regard, or have you kind of picked things up from different places along the way? You know, it's a good question. I would, I would, say, first, I would say first and foremost for me is that um, whenever I'm making any decisions, uh, I have the luxury of using a lot of the years that I played, 15 years playing professionally, sitting in those locker rooms at halftime, after the game, training during the week, preparing for an opponent. I've had a lot of different coaches that obviously I've, I've seen things that I really like that they, they've done and seen some things that I said to myself I would never do, right? Um, so I've, I've had that playing experience. And then, and then really just focusing in on some of the coaches that I really respected and, and, and found a lot of success with in that I like the way that they went about their business. You know, if, if you just take even Bob Gansler, for example, when I played here for him, the one thing I always loved about him is that you know, the highs were never high and the lows were never low. He just kept things at a real steady state because it's a long season. You gotta know how to grind out those 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 opportunities and those results. And and that's just one. So you you know, you learn to beg, borrow, and steal along the way. But at the end, as a coach, as a manager, you have to be true to yourself. If if you try to imitate someone else, the players are gonna see through that right away in the first fifteen minutes and you're gonna lose them. You have to be who you are. Um, and then the last piece about it is that you have to go with your gut instinct a lot in this business, and uh, you have to trust yourself. So, and that takes a little time. It takes uh, it takes some time to make some mistakes and then come back and do it again. But uh, you know, and I'm still learning every day. But it's it's a it's a great it's a great. Uh, uh, profession to Perfect. be in. Perfect. Well, Peter, that's all we have for you today. Thanks so much for coming in. Of course, don't forget to check out Peter and the rest of the MLS All-Stars Wednesday night, the 2013 AT&T MLS All-Star Game, 9 p.m. Eastern. You can watch it on ESPN2, Rudy Moss, or TSN and RDS. And, of course, we'll have lots of coverage leading up right here on MLSsoccer.com. Peter, once again, thank you so much for joining us today. Josh, I appreciate it. And uh, to all those people in Social HQ, I, like I said, I'm going to come over and fix some of the IT problems you guys have in the next few minutes. All right. Sounds good. We'll talk to you again soon. See you, buddy.